Welcome to the channel. Today we are exploring a critical conversation featuring one of my heroes, Lena Khan, the chair of the FCC, which is the Federal Trade Commission, as she discusses the FTC's fight against monopolies and unfair market practices. Now, she was up on John Stewart. Love you, John Stewart. But I was following her way before. So let me start by doing a little justice and introducing Lena Khan. Lena Khan, again, the chair of the FCC, really, really smart, confident, and together leader, is the leader and is leading the charge to protect consumer rights from monopolistic behavior and unfair uh, market practices. The FTC, the Federal Trade Commission, enforces antitrust and consumer protection laws to ensure a fair marketplace. And I gotta tell you something, I haven't seen any, you know, fighters going after big corporations in a very long time. And we get to take note, nod our hats, and also say, hey, let's appreciate the fight that's going on. So who is Lena Khan? Lena Khan is a trailblazing legal scholar and public servant known for her expertise in antitrust law and competition policies. Born in London and raised in New York. Didn't know she was born in London. She is a Yale Law student graduate who has quickly risen to prominence in the legal world. Khan made headlines for the groundbreaking papers on Amazon's antitrust paradox, which we'll get into, and her fearless approach to taking on corporate giants that has made her a dynamic and influential figure in the fight for fair competition. Beyond her impressive career, she's known for her love of literature, or didn't know this, and her mission to ensure a level playing field in the marketplace. And isn't that what we want? As a serial entrepreneur, as a agency owner, as someone that stands for people standing in your voice, standing in your power, standing in your vision, we all get to have a little punch. And that 11th field is not level. And guess what? You get up and you go the fight. But sometimes there's greed that's so apparent, you gotta say pushback. And this is just a little pushback to corporations to say, hey, leave some on the table because there's nothing left. Who's buying your stock? So anyway, monopolies and oligarchies is what we're talking about. And so let me break that down to you. So an oligarchy is monopoly is someone that owns the whole thing, right? In a business and an oligarchy, which is really where we are a lot, is that it's a company that owns everything else. So whether it's our food industries, that you have all these major plays and brands and stuff, but they really go all and buy a few companies. Or you have your media companies and all. We're living in an oligarchy state. It is what it is. And when you get to a place that, and there's, there's advantages to that. There's, there's supply chain advantages. There's, there's finance advantages. There's pricing advantages. Super. There's also the let's play fair and have a little fun with it and just don't squeeze every last drop. That's all I'm saying. When she was talking about it in the interview, she was talking about how many lawyers there were compared to how much the corporations have. And I think she said it was like 100 to 1. With, with around 1,200 employees, it strategically wins cases to safeguard public interest. She also addresses oligarchies, which a few firms dominant entire industries, reducing competition and harming consumers. And I don't know, I'm kind of all for the, the underdog and, and, and yeah, and, and the, the, the scale of, of where she's at compared to these corporations. She's a fighter. I love that. So here's some of the cases. The case first, well, this is what brought my attention. And then I noticed so was the Amazon case and Bezos. I don't know. You think that you know, enough, although you look good. Oh yeah. <laughs> a significant case involves Amazon, accused of maintaining its monopoly through illegal practices. Some businesses sometimes pay up to 50% of their revenue to Amazon due to relevant ads and high fees and a, a clear example of monopoly exploitation. And the FTC office faces a resource imbalance against large corporations they they took sense of legal teams. I, I talked about that. However, by leveraging its strength, the FTC remains undeterred and continues its mission to enforce fair practices. It's 
just keep showing up. And I'm like, really? Like, there they are again. And there's Lena. And I love that. She's a fighter. Okay, so there are Sharon's strategies. To deter illegal behavior, the FTC goes beyond imposing fines. It targets individual executives and seeks penalties that have a broader impact, aiming to prevent future violations. So basically, they're saying when it's hurting people, they go in. And it's not about making money. It's not about, you know, the bottom line and doing well for the economy and all of that. Hello, America. I love being here. But it's about when it really starts to impact people's lives and, and the quality of their life. And and so there's a really large gap there before the FCC steps in, from, from my experience. So let's talk about the pharmaceutical industry. Hello, Bernie. So in the pharmaceutical industry, companies have used improper patents to keep drug prices high. Okay, we had like, for instance, um, diabetes medicine, right? Insulin. It was actually given as a free patent to the world. And now it's slowly the price of insulin coming down. But it was not that way. And the FTC's intervention has led to significant changes such as price caps on inhalers showcasing its role in battling against some health practices. I don't know, breathing, is that important for some people in, in life? And, and is that impacting their quality? I would say so. What about the tech industry? Okay, they're also doing the, in the tech, you guys are really, with AI and everything, just keep consolidating up and I love what you're bringing, but getting interesting how much power there actually is within the tech uh, industry. The FCC is also scrutinizing tech giants. For instance, has filed a lawsuit against Facebook alleging that, and this was real, this caught my interest, alleging that acquisition of Instagram and WhatsApp were actually into competition. They were the competition, so they said, let's just scoop them up. That's smart business, but that's anti-competition. That's very monopolistic. Investigations are ongoing into which partnerships and invest investments in AI by companies like Apple and Microsoft give them undue marked influence. Algorithm-driven price fixing. This is a big one that's coming out. This is coming out in real estate. This is coming out in rentals. And the algorithm pricing can lead to collective price inflation. If you know what your, your competitor's charging, to your left, to your right, you say, oh, okay, great. We'll all charge the same and inflate the price. I don't know, the price is kind of like greedy. We should use the same system, ultimately harming consumers. There's that harming consumer. The FTC is aware of these risks and is monitoring such practices. Market domination allows it to influence supply chains and wages. Now, I'm going to tell you, Walmart's a smart company. They are the eminent leader in supply chain. They had the University of Arkansas, top, 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 number one school for masters of supply chain. And I give it to you, right? And also you're competing against Amazon, which that's where we're going with that. But to influence supply chain and wages, which can negatively impact local business and workers, showcasing the broader implication of market power. Well, I think that ship has sailed already. So supply chain concentration risks and here's where it can hurt the consumer is that if everybody is one supply chain, we experienced this in COVID, that there's a bottleneck. If there's a problem somewhere, does that impact the entire nation? Hello, do we remember toilet paper? And I have to ask you, why did everybody buy toilet paper? I still don't understand. I could see water, I could see batteries, I could see rice. But toilet paper, this is what people grabbed. Just never understood anyone. I'd love for you to leave in the comment what you think why people grab toilet paper as like the go-to product during the pandemic. It's still bad to me. So government policies and industry consolidation have significant impact on market dynamics and competition, reinforcing the need for vigilant oversight by agencies like the FTC. And before we lap, let me know in the comments, do you think the FTC's efforts will succeed in breaking up monopolies? I think they're going to put a little band-aid on it, but they're doing the fight against the big, it, it, it is the being behemothal that monopolies are. And your thoughts could spark a great dis discussion, which is what this is all about, is about discussion and what you think. Your opinion matters. You matter. I hope you found them insightful. I'm fighting monopolies and protecting fair market practices. Don't forget to like, to comment. I'd love to hear from you and subscribe for more updates. As we were thinking of going with this, is doing a heroes section. And, and Lena, 
You are my hero and keep up the great work. Till next time.